11 games in the Premier League. How much sort of pressure and how much of a challenge is that now for your players and for, you know, for them to live up to, to that challenge and, and try and deliver? I think that pressure is coming from the start of the season. But um, when we were in December, nobody talked about Champions League. It was like an impossible thing. And now everybody talked like, yeah, we have to get the Champions League. Of course, as Arsenal players, as a club, we have to fight for the Champions League. But we have to go game by game. It changed a lot of things in the last two months. Let's go game by game. Let's try to beat West Ham first and we'll be closer. That's all we can control because at the moment, it's not in our hands, it's in the opponent's hands. And they have to fail and we have to win games and then we'll have a chance. How, how do you deal with it as those games, as those games tick down? How do you kind of deal with that and keep, keep players calm effectively? The players know the demands of playing for this club and if we don't reach any European competition, um, we know what uh, the meaning of that is. So they don't need any more pressure. They absolutely know where they are. Mikel, it could be the, the first time since last February that Arsenal have won three Premier League games in a row. Is that, just, is that basically the root of the issue? It's just consistency, isn't it? Absolutely, you are not able to get those types of runs in the Premier League with the quality teams that they are involved. You have no chance, um, and that's what we have to look: consistency, away and at home. Every three days, perform, and those performances will bring results. You mentioned the agent, but you've been playing without pressure almost for, for the Champions League because, like you say, no one expected it. So now, almost the, the pressure's on it. It's a new challenge for these young players, isn't it? I think the chance for the new players just to wear their shirt is, is big enough, you know, and I don't think they think too much about the objective of the Champions League or the Europa League or the relegation zone when we were talking that we we're four points behind, you know, which is a much worse pressure, I believe, as well. They're dealing with the situation. We try to help them to focus just on what they have to do on that pitch and the rest will come naturally. I can ask about um, Henrik Mkhitaryan. He's, I think he's got six goals. Three assists in eight starts this season over in Italy. He scored again at the weekend. Got an assist at the weekend. Is he player you're sort of following quite closely? How he's getting on? Yeah, we monitor all the players that we have on loan that they're not uh, with here at the moment. That we own them is our responsibility. Mick is doing really well in recent games. We know the player he's been. We know his past, and um, and we need to have all the information to make the right decisions in the future. Does he interest you as a you know potential player for next season? I always liked him. He's the type of player that can fit any in any team when he's at his best. Um, he needs to do it consistently, and um, and here he had moments, you know, and that's what we have to assess. Given the lack of goals and assists really from midfield this season, it's kind of a player you could do it now. It, it? It's a possibility that we have and I will consider. Mikel, do you have the best and worst case scenario for Sorrero? Are you expecting him to, to play again this season? With the best one, I'm not optimistic, like short term now in a week or two he will be available. Hopefully he can avoid any surgeries, which is always very traumatic. And hopefully, yes, if we can have him before the end of the season, it will be much better. Mikhail, can I just ask someone who you won't, you won't be coming up against on Saturday, but that you know quite well, is Jack Wilshire. Mm -hmm. Just, like, his injury record's been horrible, yeah. hasn't it? It's, it's, <coughs> it must be horrible to see from someone who knew how good he yeah. was. It's very sad with Jack. When I joined here and, and I watch him play every day in training and the ability he had, you know, you could say that he can be one of the best midfielders. And um, But he always had something, you know, and it was, he started to build again a career and then again another injury, again another setback, and it was disappointing. I was very impressed with Jack, how strong he is mentally to deal with the situation because as well he had a lot of pressure from the media because the expectations for him were big. But it's what it is. How good could he have been, you think? He could be phenomenal. Um, yeah. Just on the lone players, obviously uh, Tyrese John Jaws picked up an injury. Mm. Well, that was confirmed earlier today. Um, would he? Would the plan be for him to come back to Arsenal then for the rest of the season? Or? We'll have to assess that with the medical department, uh, see what the advice is. They need to obviously agree between the clubs what's the best uh, way to move forward from that. So, yeah. I don't know. Obviously, Played a couple of different roles for Lincoln uh, as like in a two-man strike partnership and as a one-man. Uh, do you think that's probably benefited him as well, even if it's? A short I think time? he can do both. When he was with us, uh, I was impressed with him. His uh, understanding of the game, how he links with people around him, 
how powerful he is. He's got a goal on him. Yeah. Okay, last couple. Okay. Last couple. Yeah, okay. um, just on, on David Moyes, maybe touching a bit on the question from earlier. He's he's kind of got this reputation now as being a bit of an old school manager who maybe, rightly or wrongly, people will think he, he can't put a technical team together. Maybe he's not a modern manager as such. Mm. Is, I mean, is that fair? I think when, uh, for what I know, David and uh, and the people is going around him. He's always trying to to evolve. He's always trying to get the last thing to bring up to his players, to his club. And there's no someone that sits down and says, "I used to do things like this 20 years ago, and I still do like this." I don't think he is. And if he does things that he used to do 20 years ago, it's because he's fully convinced that it's the right thing to do for his players. Okay, last couple, Duncan, and then Simon. Thank you. Just a quick one, and I know it's slightly off track, but how concerned are you as a manager and as a club about the potential of losing players in three weeks' time to uh, international football with all the travel issues? And you won't seem certain they want to go ahead with these games, but as a manager, that must be a concern. And I'm sure if they make that decision, like uh, the most important thing has to be the health and safety of the players, and whether they make that decision probably it will mean that everything is safe and there is no risk for the players, hopefully. To do Mikael, with, uh, with Kieran coming back, obviously mm. Bakayo has been brilliant at left-back. What does that mean for, for his future in terms of where he fits in this team? Do you think he still needs to stay as a left-back or, or further forward? That they have to compete, that they have to challenge each other and improve, and whoever is best will be in the position, which is a really good thing for the team. And, and with Bakayo, there's been a bit of talk that maybe... He's in Gareth Southgate's skates radar right for the England squad and I'm playing internationally. Do you think he's ready for that step up or do you think perhaps people need to calm down a bit with him? I think he's doing really well with us. International level is a different level. It's up to the to the England manager to discuss whether he's ready to do that and what he's got in his squad and whatever he decides we will support the idea and the player. Okay guys. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.